Hello and welcome to Richardson RFPD's Tech Chats. My name is Simon Tompkins. I'm a senior field application engineer at Richardson RFPD. I'm here today talking with Brian Eichler, VP Global Sales at LeCap, and we will be discussing an activated dry electrode technology used in LeCap's supercapacitor products. Hey Brian, how's it going? Thanks for joining us today. Hey, doing good, Simon. Thanks for having me. Good to have you here. Um, so supercapacitors and ultracapacitors are finding even more popularity in more applications. Could you possibly briefly outline what's the difference between LeCap's activated electrode technology and the wet coating electrode that is available from some other suppliers? Sure, uh, Simon, no problem. What most people may not realize is that the electrode material comprises a majority of the cell content and is the most important element enabling ultracapacitor performance. Uh, let me put up a few slides to, to, to show you. The products in the upper left-hand corner uh, are LeCap's 2.7 volt, 350 farad ultracapacitor cells. And we opened one up to remove the, the electrode jelly roll. Um, and you can see that the whole contents inside the cell is basically the electrode material. And if you unroll the, the jelly roll, you can see the different layers of carbon coated aluminum foil and paper separator. And the carbon coated foil is the actual electrode material and what we're talking about today. Um, the photo in the lower left hand corner shows LeCap's activated dry electrode material, which is a freestanding carbon film. This is prior to lamination to the foil. Um, and the rolls you see in the middle at the bottom are completed rolls ready for assembly into ultracapacitor cells. And I want to point out that uh, LeCap's activated dry electrode is 100% made in the USA in Sacramento, California, and is uh, patent protected. The next slide shows the uh, compares the major differences between a wet coating process and LeCap's activated dry electrode process. So both process result both processes result in coating on metal foil, but the the steps followed to to achieve this are very different between the two. So the wet process begins with uh, powder mixing step followed by slurry formulation, which involves highly toxic uh, solvents. And the following steps of coating and drying consume considerable amounts of energy from the tunnel ovens and solvent recovery systems. And there are additional labor costs involved to run all that equipment. So, so the process of wet coating electrode is, is uh, not very energy efficient. It uses the toxic solvents and, and is uh, much more costly overall. The dry process, on, on the other hand, uh, begins with a powder mixing and binder activation step, followed by something we call fibrillization. And after this fibrillization step, we are able to create that freestanding carbon film you saw on the prior slide. Um, there is no need for drying ovens, no need for solvent recovery systems, which makes our activated dry process significantly more energy efficient than a wet process. Very good. So uh, regarding that slurry process used in the traditional wet coating, uh, I mean, are there any reliability improvements when using LeCap's dry electro technology process? Great question. Yes, there are. Let me show you on the next slide. Um, there's two major uh, reliability advantages achieved by the activated dry process versus a wet process. The first is what we call carbon layer durability. Um, our activated dry process creates a very durable, um, uh, secure uh, carbon layer adhesion to the foil um, as compared to the wet process, which creates a carbon layer that's brittle, susceptible to cracking and flaking off. So this is gives us better reliability. Um, the other problem that may you may encounter with a wet processed electrode is um, residual solvent contamination. So the ovens that they use to dry the, the wet electrode are the intention there is to remove all the solvents um, through evaporation. 
and there is a chance that some residual residual solvent can be trapped behind in the carbon structure that will lead to gas generation and early end of life of the products. Yeah, I mean, that's very clear. Thanks for explaining those those important topics. Uh, I mean, with the lack of solvents and the reduction in the process steps, there seem to be many uh, advantages in terms of sustainability of manufacturing of your product. Um, I mean, do you have a few words maybe to cover this increasingly important aspect? Yes, the activated dry process is highly sustainable as compared to the wet process. Our process requires no tunnel ovens or solvent recovery systems, which are both high energy consumers. We estimate that the electrode produced with our activated dry process consumes about 50% less energy than a wet processed electrode. Our process uses no toxic solvents, which is better for the environment. And there are also other savings from our drive process in lower equipment costs, lower labor costs, and a significantly smaller factory footprint. Um, and let me point out that all this, this uh, dry process, um, the process is to produce electro material for lithium ion batteries and ultra capacitors is pretty much the same. And our, our activated dry process can also be applied to lithium ion battery production with the same benefits. Yeah, I'm sure some of the uh, customers who would intend to use the LeCaps products with this dry electrode technology would really benefit from um, some of some of those topics we've discussed. I mean, have you got maybe a couple of slides or a slide just to show what the current available product lineup is from LeCap? Sure, this uh, slide highlights all of the major products we have available today. Uh, we recently launched a new 3 volt, 3000 farad cell and have some additional 3 volt cells in development. Um, having a higher cell voltage um, can enable using fewer ultra capacitors to achieve the, the required system voltage and or improve life performance. Um, we're also continuing to develop our lithium ion capacitor products in Sacramento, which also use our activated dry electrode. Lithium ion capacitor, capacitors have similar life performance as ultra capacitors, but about two to three times the energy density. Um, both ultra caps and lithium ion capacitors are ideal for applications where energy storage is required, but battery performance, life and maintenance are a problem. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that was probably a really good introduction for some people who are interested in using supercapacitor, ultra capacitors, however you want to call them. I mean, it does seem to me that the products over there at LeCap are pretty differentiated in terms of this activated dry electro technology. So thanks for taking the time today to discuss that with me, Brian. Thank you, Simon. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. No problem. And uh, just for the rest, uh, for everyone listening in, I mean, you can learn more about this and other topics in the featured supercapacitor area of Richardson RFPD's webpage website. You can also follow the Ask an Expert link to submit any questions you might have on this topic or any other topic to do with uh, LeCaps products and any design challenges you may have. Uh, it's all that's left for me to say is thank you. Uh, thanks again, Brian. Thank you, Simon.